everyone, my name is Jennifer and welcome to A Vintage Vanity. I am super excited about today's video because you guys are here. And we are starting off on a new journey. We are going to be sewing our way through Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. <sighs> I'm very excited about this. What I love about these books is essentially the front of the book is filled with tips and tricks um, and techniques and information and the back is actually filled with dress patterns. There are 23 of these in here and in the very very back is the patterns themselves. So um, yeah we're gonna be sewing 23 dresses. I'm so excited and a little bit overwhelmed but it's going to be fabulous. Now I have been sewing since high school and quite frankly that was a hot minute years or so and I am completely self-taught and um, I find that I do things in a certain way and I love books like this even if you are a beginner intermediate or advanced because they will teach you ne new techniques and as well uh, you're gonna walk away with a bunch of patterns that you can mix and match so let's see if we can teach this old dog some new tricks We're starting things off with the blue wool work dress, which is a basic A-line dress with cuffed short sleeves and an adorable Peter Pan collar. And what I love about this dress is it's so basic that you can really, it's like, it's like an empty palette, plate, slate slate it's an empty slate that's what it is and you can really just have a lot of fun with it and of course fun to me means getting a little nerdy with it so I headed over to myfabricdesigns.com to find the perfect fabric for this project which is fortunate because they are today's sponsor and I do want to say a huge thank you to myfabricdesigns.com for sponsoring this video and helping to make this series possible the minute I saw this dress, I knew I wanted to do something Star Trek inspired and actually more specifically wanted to do something that was inspired by Lieutenant Uhura because I don't know what girl didn't want to be her at some point in their life. So I simply typed in Star Trek into the search bar of the website and voila, Star Trek fabric. I want it all. But when I saw that red fabric, with the Star Trek logo on it, and it was a tone on tone, which would be perfect for work because it doesn't scream nerdy, but if you get it, it's like a secret club. You know, if you see that dress, you see that logo, you know what it is, you know what? We're friends, we're in. The other thing is I did not want the print to be small. I wanted it to be very large scale. And the thing that I love about this website so much is that you can scale the print. Mind blowing amazing I cannot say enough good things about this and all you need to do is just click on that button to adjust it you want it smaller so go smaller you want a larger go larger I settled on a DPI of 450 which meant that my logo turned out to be about four inches long which was perfect went ahead and ordered a quantity of four yards stuck that into my shopping cart cha-ching and then it does take about 10 to 15 business days to arrive on your doorstep and you can start your project once your fabric arrives go ahead and throw it into the washing machine on a cold water setting this will shrink the material as much as it's going to shrink and cold water will preserve the color after selecting all your materials, you're going to need to start cutting out your pattern pieces and to figure out what pattern pieces you need, you're actually going to look into the blue section on the book here, which tells you exactly what pattern sheets that you'll need. And again, those pattern sheets are located in the back of the book. And for this one, we are gonna need pattern sheets one, two, seven, and eight. What you'll also find there as well is what pattern pieces you need, how many you're cutting out, and what type of fabric you're cutting it out of. If you're having trouble and you're getting a little confused because those pattern sheets are a little crazy, um, you can go to the pattern layout, which um, for this dress is on page 222, which shows you where the pieces are going to lay out, but it also shows you what those pieces look like, so it makes it a little bit easier to identify. So if you're confused, just go ahead and look at the pattern layout. 
And this is how I trace my patterns. I have the pattern paper here. Underneath that, I just have this thicker brown paper. And underneath that, I have my self-healing mat. I also use my ruler, my tracer wheel, which has the serrated edge, a sheet of tracing paper, something to press hard on the tracing paper. I just use this little like chopstick and pattern weights. And what I do is any straight lines, I actually line my ruler right up with the straight line and trace. Just makes it a little bit easier and quicker to do. Once you determine your pattern size, you'll simply find the lines that correspond to that size and trace them out. You also wanna make sure you're tracing any darts. Thing you want to be careful with as well is these patterns are multi-purpose so this is for a basic and a v-neck so we are tracing the basic bodice so you want to make sure to follow that neckline instead of the v-neckline to transfer our markings that are on the paper i'm going to slip my tracing paper right between the two sheets and again making sure i'm copying the correct one for my size i'm just pushing down on that to transfer the marking then I simply use a sharpie to draw over the perforations and markings. And then we will transfer any information from our instructions onto here, such as this is to be cut on the fold. As well as here in the instructions, it says basic, basic bodice front cut one of fabric and lining on fold. And just go ahead and start cutting. From the first sheet, you will need the collar pattern and the cuff pattern. From sheet two, you will need the A-line skirt back pattern and the A-line skirt front pattern. From sheet seven, you will need the basic sleeve pattern, the front bodice pattern, and optionally, the inseam pocket. And from sheet eight, you'll need the basic bodice back pattern and one cap. Best piece of advice I can give to a new sewer, take the time, make a muslin. I know we all want to get to the pretty dress at the end, but here's the thing. You don't make the muslin, you get to the dress at the end, there's a good chance it's not going to fit. And after all your hard work, there, in my case, there probably would be tears, right? And frustration. And we don't want that to happen. So make the muslin. Not only can you perfect the fit of your garment, but also... You get to make all your mistakes on that, right? Especially if you're learning a new technique. You figure out what works for you and what doesn't on your muslin, not on your nice dress. For this project, I just did a muslin of the bodice and sleeves. And let me tell you this, even though in the book, there's a size chart that tells you exactly what size you will fit. And if you go online, people have said like, hey, am I the size? It was perfect, it was my size, everything worked out fine and dandy. Here's the thing, this is my size. I should fit a size 16. These are my measurements, almost exactly. Um, I made and cut out and traced and did all that. Size 16 muslin, didn't fit, too small. So had I cut that out of my good fabric, uh, there would have been so many tears, right? I had to order new fabric, wait for it to get here. It would have been a whole thing. So um, yay for muslins. So what I ended up doing is I sized up all of the pattern pieces from a 16 to an 18 and went with that. And it fit pretty darn well. Uh, the neckline is a little bit too um, off with their head-ish. So I am going to be lowering the neckline by an inch. Most of my fit issues on this pattern actually came from the sleeves. So I do all my adjustments step by step because quite frankly, if you do one adjustment and it solves everything, then you don't have to do the others and you know how that then changes the way things feel. So it's a great way to learn as well. So the first thing I did was I opened up the armpit itself, the armhole. Um, I made it larger by about a um, half an inch. Tried that on and I still was having a lot of pulling across the my very muscular biceps <laughs> and as well as having a problem hugging invisible people so the next thing I decided to do was actually open up the size of the sleeve itself tried that back on and um, fit much much better but still 
couldn't quite hug people really comfortably. I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but the shoulder seam was actually off my shoulder slightly, which was causing part of that problem. So it's almost the reverse of what you think. You think you need to make everything bigger, but it turned out I needed to move that seam of that shoulder up. And an easy way to figure out kind of where your shoulder seams should sit is actually put a um, ruler under your armpit and then draw a line up and that should bring you right to where your shoulder seam should sit. Neat little trick, huh? One of the things I do really love about books like Gertie's is that she addresses opening up the sleeves, um, changing the circumference. So if you've never done stuff like that, she will actually walk you through how to make those adjustments. And then the other thing I did is the waist was a little bit high, so I um, added about an inch to the bottom of the pattern to increase the length of the torso. So the book will show us how to lay out our pattern pieces so that it fits on our fabric the most economical way. But one thing I noticed is the sleeves are shown being cut on the fold. Uh, please don't do that. The pattern doesn't call it being cut on the fold and the curve of the armhole is not the same on the front as it is on the back. So don't do that. <laughs> So this is how I've laid out my pattern pieces. Uh, I folded the fabric over here so my selvages are lined up over there. I've got the bodice on the fold, the bodice front on the fold here. We've got the bodice back over there. The optional pocket is over there. One of the sleeves is here and then we have the front skirt on the fold right over there. And then I have plenty of fabric that is off the table for the back section of the skirt and the other two pockets. So everything is cut out of our regular fabric. We have our back and front pieces of the skirt. We have our optional pocket, our collar with our inner facing. And what I do when we're, I'm working with black especially is I mark the wrong side of the fabric because there can sometimes be a little color differentiation between the right and wrong side that you won't notice in your sewing room only when you get out in direct sunlight. So we have our collar pieces here as well as our interfacing. We have our 24 inch zipper. We have our bodice front and back already with our darts in and I'm using this gold trim for the cuffs of my dress and I have about a yard and a half of that. Let's stitch it all together. I stitched and ironed the long edges of the cuff together and then on the side that the inner facing is on is where I pin down my gold trim. You'll want to make sure to pin this down very well because trim will move as you're stitching. And then I just threw it onto the sewing machine and stitched it down. One of the really cool things I walked away from with this project was actually setting in the sleeve and essentially what you do is when you're basting around uh, the sleeve itself you're placing your finger behind the foot and keeping the fabric there so it actually starts kind of doing an accordion motion which kind of bends the fabric and starts to prepare it to be set into the sleeve. What's interesting about set in the sleeves is that the sleeve itself is actually larger than the armhole so it can be sometimes a little difficult to get your sleeve in. I find it easiest to first match up my side seam, top seam, and notches. Then from there I'll work with the pleats that we created on the sewing machine to ease the sleeve into the armhole and if I need to gather it just a little bit I'll pull a little on the tail of the thread. You'll see some puckering on the very edge of the fabric, but that's to be expected and that will stay in the seam allowance. So, let's see how things turned out. Probably the biggest thing I learned from this project was a new trick to set in sleeves. I'd only done them a couple times before, but I found them very, very frustrating. And while I had to do a lot of changes and mock-ups to the sleeves on this, setting in the sleeve wasn't so bad and I have Gertie to thank for that. I absolutely love the way this dress turned out. It makes my nerdy little heart so happy and it gives me Lieutenant Uhura vibes all day long. I am of the belief that if you can put a pocket on it, put a pocket. But with this dress, when you sit down especially, the pockets are a 
a little noticeable. And even when you're wearing it, you can kind of see the pocket. So I'm going to shockingly say this dress would be better without the pockets. In fact, I might remove the pockets on this dress. Other than that, I wouldn't change a thing. Because of the number of adjustments that I had to make to the dress, I don't think this is a my first dress experience. I think this is maybe uh, my fourth or fifth dress experience, just because, not just because of the adjustments. I think this is great for, because of the help that Gertie provides in the book, I think this is a great first, like I am learning how to modify and adjust my patterns for fit. This is a great one to do it. The reason why I say it's not great for beginners is because of actually the patterns themselves. Like some of them will have notches to line up with things later, but the corresponding piece doesn't have a notch. Um, the patterns, like the way they had it laid out wasn't exact. So there's a little flaws here and there where if you have a little bit of knowledge, you'll know how to like center your bodice and all that kind of stuff that those notches aren't as necessary. Um, and you can reason out the way thing, why things are the way they are. And I think with a little bit of knowledge, you'd be fine with that. Overall, would I make this dress again? Oh, heck yes. And I love the fact that I now have a sleeve pattern, a collar pattern, a bodice pattern, and a skirt pattern that I could change up and put on different items. And that makes me extremely happy. I hope you guys really enjoyed this new series. And again, I want to give a huge thank you to my fabric designs for helping make this possible by sponsoring today's video. And if you would like to actually pick up the same fabric that I used in this video, I will leave a link in the description box below. And if you're not a Star Trek fan, don't worry. I won't judge you. And my fabric designs has got your back because they've got a ton of different designs. And if you can't find something there that you like, you can actually upload your own designs and have it printed on fabric. And they have like 27 different fabric choices. I use premium cotton for this and it is a gorgeous, nice weight fabric. Now, um, if you can't find a design, you can't draw a design, well, guess what? You can still design your own because they have like a section that has like clip art and pictures and things and you just have to click and move and create your own. How easy is that? As always, I love hearing from you guys. So in the comment section below, let me know what you thought of today's video. And if you like this new series, go ahead and click that like, thumbs up, let me know you wanna see more. And of course, you don't wanna miss a minute of what goes on here on A Vintage Vanity, so click my face to subscribe. If you can't wait for the next video to come out and you're gonna miss me too much, go ahead and follow me on all my social medias as a vintage vanity. And of course, you can always check out my latest video. If you wanna shop my clothing line, go ahead and click on that boomerang. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.